Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Fingers crossed this will be a short one today, but you never quite know with any of these smaller uh, car projects. I just wanted to make a video because I haven't seen any other videos documenting this and just wanted to uh, kind of do a how-to video in case you're interested in doing it as well. So um, today, as you saw in the title, I'm gonna be doing a sway bar delete, uh, front sway bar delete on my Toyota Sequoia. I have a 2002 Toyota Sequoia, which is a first gen. I know there are lots of different opinions on front sway bar deletes, but I've talked to a couple other people with first gen Sequoias who have done them and have highly recommended them. So I'm gonna give it a shot. Um, I'm a little worried. Sometimes some of those sway bar end links can get really rusty and uh, can be a pain to take off. I'm thinking I'll probably have to cut them off. And for anyone wondering, the main reason I'm doing a front sway bar delete is just for better off-road performance. I've been on a whole bunch of off-roading and truck camping trips recently and have just not been super happy with the off-road performance, especially on washboard and some rockier trails. It is not very smooth. So I'm hoping with a front sway bar delete, um, and allowing the front suspension to be completely independent from each other. I'm hoping it'll just be smoother and a more comfortable ride when hitting trails. So yeah, that's the plan for today. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. Hopefully it comes off smoothly and uh, let's get into it. Now these end links, as I thought, the Allen key is pretty rusted out right now. I don't think I'll be able to get that bolt off, which means the only option will be to cut it off. Um, as you can see, the end links are kind of beat up anyway. The rubber boots are kind of peeling. Uh, I'm sure these are probably pretty old. They're obviously not in great condition and I'm not too worried about cutting them off because they would need replacing anyway. All right, one side is off. All right, so one side is off. It actually was a little bit easier than I was even expecting. Actually, I ended up being able to get it off with the Allen wrench, so I kind of just like hammered the Allen wrench in there and got it stuck. Um, there is a little bit of rust, so it didn't like fit in there perfectly, but I was able to get in there strong enough and uh, then was able to just get turns and loosen that nut with a uh, ratcheting socket wrench. So pleasantly surprised with how easily the side came off. Um, gonna jump over, see if we can get the other side off. Hopefully it's just as easy. And then once once we get that side off, there's just a couple bolts that are holding the sway bar to the bottom of the car. So jump over, try and get the other end link disconnected, and then we'll move on to the final bolts. All right, so the other side was not so easy. It took about an hour. Uh, the Allen key was really, really stripped out. I couldn't get anything in there to hold it. So I ended up just having to use my Dremel with a metal blade uh, to saw off the, or saw or cut off the end. Um, and the blades I had were so small, so I couldn't go all the way through the bolt in one pass, just the way this was positioned. So that took a lot longer than I was expecting or hoping, but I did get it off. The last thing is just four bolts um, and there are two on each side. They're just holding the sway bar to the frame. So hopefully those will be a bit easier here. You can see on the sway bar, um, it's really hard to see, but where the sway bar connects to the frame, uh, right here, there are just two bolts on the top, um, kind of up top uh, and then the same thing on the other side there, so four bolts total. All right, this is where they're located. I just got one out. Um, let's see if we can get the second one. All right, 
There's the second one. Let's do the other side. The other thing is one of these is a bolt and one of these is a nut. So uh, you got one of each. It's really hard to show, but if you guys just look underneath your Sequoia and you look for the sway bar, you can clearly see where it's mounted to the frame. There's just two bolts, I guess one bolt and one nut. Um, they're just on the top side. They're 14 millimeters and both of mine have been really easy to get out. Now it's just figuring out how to get this thing out. Alright guys, wow, that was a little more difficult than I thought, but the sway bar is out. Let's go. Now let's see if I can climb out of here. Alright guys, so the sway bar is officially out. That other side, um, just getting the end link out was a lot harder just because I did have to cut it um, because the Allen key kind of got stripped out, but I did, did get out and you can see it behind me. Um, this is the part I was trying to describe to you guys. This is where it mounts to the frame. So one nut goes there and then one bolt goes there. They're both 14 millimeters. Both of those, thankfully, were a lot easier to get out than the uh, end links. Now I'm not 100% set on keeping it without the sway bar. I definitely want to test it both on road and off road, see how it drives, see how I like it, and uh, then go from there. Like I said earlier, the biggest reason I wanted to do this was for off-road performance. I haven't been super happy with the Old Man Emu Springs on washboard and dirt trails and rocky terrain. It feels really, really stiff. It's really bumpy on the inside. And from what I've heard, getting rid of the sway bar and allowing the front suspension to be completely independent from each other does make a pretty big difference on off-road terrain. So I'm super excited to test it out and super excited to see the improvement. It's hard to believe that just removing this one metal bar would change it that much, but I've heard a lot of good things from other people and getting rid of the sway bar seems to be a pretty popular modification. So uh, super stoked to get it removed and excited to test it out. Now I will give you guys an update probably in a later video once I get a chance to fully test it and test the on-road and off-road driving without the sway bar. I really want to take some time and test it out before I kind of share my opinion on it with you guys. So stay tuned, I'll have an update video coming soon where I kind of debrief and share some of my thoughts on a sway bar delete on a first gen Sequoia. This is just a quick video, I hope it was helpful to you guys. Like I said, I couldn't find any other videos on sway bar deletes on YouTube. It is a pretty straightforward modification. Um, it didn't take too long. The hardest part was just getting that end link off. As long as you have something to cut that end link off, if the Allen key is stripped, uh, it's not terrible. I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this. I hope this was helpful. Stay tuned for an update. Uh, if you guys could like and subscribe, it really helps me out. And I'll see you guys in the next one.